Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking about the Netflix series, The Pentaveret. We are joined today by actor, creator, writer, and executive producer, Mike Myers, cast members, Ken Jong, Debbie Mazur, Lydia West, and Richard McCabe, as well as director, Kim Kirkby. And Mike, I wanted to start with a question sure. for you. Um, you know, in part of your writing process in creating the show with Roger Drew and Ed Dyson, you've created a show that really has the larger version of this comedy, which is The Pentaveret, a secret society at the risk of malevolence within their own walls. And then you've got the more intimate space of comedy, which is what are the interactions between these characters in the day to day who happen to be within this story and within this setup. And I was interested in how you really worked to create these two different styles and spheres of comedy in a way that really interlaces and comes together in the show. Well, thank you for malevolence and interlaces. <laughs> um, those are two good words. Um, I, um, I've been fascinated by secret societies my entire life. Um, my mom was in the RAF and she uh, had top security clearance. So I was obsessed with the idea of secrets and, and all this stuff. And um, I don't know if she had top security clearance, by the way, she had security clearance, yeah. but um, I've just always wanted to, you know, just the, I wanted to have a, what do you call it? A, a, a procedural show about a mythical organization. And uh, it's, you know, I've just always thought, well, why do secret societies have to be bad? What if actually there was five people that ran the world? What if they were nice? And what if I played all five of them? And uh, that was my pitch to Netflix. And they said yes. And uh, then one of the first things I wanted to do was to get Tim Kirkby on board. Uh, I hunted him down like the animal that he is. And he said yes. And then uh, assemble this fantastic cast of people. And Tim and I were talking earlier. We just uh, we just couldn't believe that everybody said yes. And we're thrilled to have everybody here. Just one of the most fun casts I've ever worked with. Certainly one of the most talented casts I've ever worked with. Mm -hmm. And, and speaking of talented cast, Ken, and coming over to you, um, and this is spoiler territory a little bit for people who have watched all of the episodes, you know, you get this really delicious space in which you get to play two very different directions with your character in terms of who is he pretending to be when he comes in at the beginning and what's the truth underneath that later on in the episodes. And so how did that give you a really broad spectrum of space to play within with almost these two versions of a character that you get to explore? I mean, it's an embarrassment of riches. It's all due to Mike just um, when he, he called and had this role with me in mind. And it was um, God, about a year and a half ago, we were, we were just talking about the vision of the Pentaveret. And then, I mean, when just when he said that, I'll be like, great, I'll play a dead foot. I'll do it. You know, I was like, it doesn't matter the role that I play. I will be there. And then it, when he discussed the role and described it, it, it was, I, I was really, really honored. And, and he I, the, what I remember that phone call was, you know, he wanted to push me in the spotlight to a side that I've never shown before. And I think that was really academically the best part of this experience for me, because I'm being pushed by one of my heroes. One of the reasons I got into comedy, that's good enough. I mean, just to be a fly on the wall, that's more than I ever need uh, out, out of this. But then to get me out of my comfort zone and, and in the plane to take me to kind of a place in comedy where I've never been taken before and to be trusted with that, that moment in the, in the plane for me is just one of my favorite days of my career because we both wanted to, to get there. And Tim, you know, both of you just trying to get me to a place I've never been. I, I, I'm, I'm forever indebted and it, it's like the best learning abroad conservatory I've ever had, you know, it really was just, I, I'm learning from, from these two kings and I, I was just so grateful. I, I really, this is one of my favorite experiences, not because he's here, it's like, yeah. and not because he's paying me to say, <laughs> but it really is one of my favorite experiences of my career. It really is. I really love hearing that. And, and Debbie, for you with your character, you know, you're getting to create this character who for the majority of the show is the only woman in the room. And yet she comes across so astute, you know, and very observational. She's the person who probably knows more than anyone else in that room at the end of the day. And so at the first point where she's ever asked for her opinion, there's a whole slew of ideas that she's already been workshopping in her head for a long time because of the groundwork that you've been laying. And so what was the groundwork that was really important for you to lay in terms of character? so that when she's asked her opinion and we see that all come forth, we know that that's already part of who she is. 
Well, I think that Patty takes her career very seriously. She, uh, you know, she comes from Massapequa, Long Island, and she lives. She's the only one who lives in the outside world who actually comes into the secret place. Uh, to go to work. And I think that, you know, she's a smart girl, even though she probably comes from like a blue collar background. She's absorbed a lot, but she really is the understudy of Lord Lordington. Mm-hmm. Um, he's entrusted trust in her and, um, and kind of shown her the ropes. And I think that she finally gets the confidence at, at a certain point. You know, she's surrounded by testosterone and different men are, that are being inducted into the pentameter. And she absorbs so much by working there that when crisis comes to hit, it's about saving humanity. She just kind of rises to the occasion and Lord Lordington gives her the permission you know, to, to, to speak up. And, um, and I, I, I was just very happy that Mike gave me a character because so often in our careers, we play characters that are, you know, from a simple background, uh, but then the, the, the advantage to having the, the knowledge and being able to like be set free, especially in, in this room of all men, or all Mike for the most part, uh, it was just wonderful. And, and Lydia, kind of similar to Ken, there's also, you know, spoiler territory mm-hmm. reveals for your character later on. Um, and when you were shaping how Canadian you wanted Riley to be, I was interested in how you found the nuances of it, because there's ways in which she's almost trying a little bit too hard, like wearing the shirt that says like Canada living yeah. the dreams without the violence, um, you know, and there's moments where it falters ever so slightly and there's little kind of nuanced gives. And then there's moments where it kind of almost gives itself away because she's trying too hard. And so how did you want to find those different details? details in it? Well, I guess uh, Riley is kind of a kiss to Canada and to Toronto and all things that are good about Canada, which is pretty much everything. So she, (laughs) so I think when, when making her, we, we try to make her very heightened and very stereotypically Canadian and we, I kind of, I got to a place with my dialect coach and with Mike's guidance too, we wanted to make her um, that heightened and that over the top. And she's just kind of, yeah, she encompasses everything that's that, that's really good. And that really is what, what kind of Canada has to offer. So she is like, she's like a, a personified, <laughs> she's, she's Canada walking. So the t-shirt, the the accent, the the love that she feels to to Ken, and both of them are really, and that this relationship that they have, and this the father figure that she sees in Ken, she just she's just all love for him, and she just wants the best for him, and she just wants him to get his job back. <laughs> That's what she wants. <laughs> And Richard, with your character, I love all of the random details from his past that he throws out as asides in the dialogue, like being a stuntman in Hollywood Westerns, being an extra in the Golden Girls. And it feels like there's such a space between the way that other people view him and the way that he really wishes they would. Um, and was that something that you really found with him and as a character that he, in saying these things, he's really trying to project a version of himself and have other people take that on board? Um. I, 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 well, it, it was Mike's sort of, you know, idea when, when, when he, he called me up and said, this guy is a, you know, an ex-Hollywood stuntman. I couldn't really see how you could start off that and then become head of the security force at the, uh, at the Penn Tavern. But um, he, he's someone who has actually got great integrity as a character. Uh, because he he really believes in the Pentaveret, that it is a force for good. And there's that lovely scene where it shows, you know, past Pentaveret members and what they've contributed to humanity. <clears throat> and uh, in the scene where, where Ken stands up for his fellow Liechtenstein guard, I think, you know, Higgins sees someone that he can really trust because he knows that something is going on, something is wrong uh, within the Pentaveret. And he, he, he uses uh, Ken to to find out what, what that is, because he sees someone who has uh, great morals uh, himself. Everything that Mike writes in this, is, uh, if you know, it's got great heart and it's got mm-hmm. great love. It's very uh, affectionate. And that, that's so refreshing in, in comedy as well, I think, really. Yeah. And and Tim, in looking at the visuals, I really love the visual aspects of how you've shaped, you know, Ken Scarborough's world in local news and a lot of the Canadian moments at the beginning, um, even down to the aspect ratio that you've chosen for that. And then having kind of an effect on a lot of the footage where it feels like you're watching an old television with it kind of flickering a little bit. 
around the edges. Um, how did you land upon a lot of the creative choices in how you wanted to have these two visual stylings for everything that happens in Canada and then the difference that comes on screen once we get to the Pentaveret? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I was, I'm, I'm about creating atmosphere and putting the, 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 the sort of the, the scaffolding around these characters and to try and try and play as straight as you can. I mean, in, in many ways, it's it shot quite dramatically, the Pentavera. Um, and, I, and I wanted to give it that 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 treatment so that it feels like a film and it feels real. If it's shot like a comedy, then then you're, you're telling people that's all it is. I think this, this is so much more than that. We, we want that heft of the of the, the the years of this society. In terms of shooting four by three in Canada, we you know it, is, it was just born out of the idea. Well, let's you know let's treat these this this country and this, these characters in completely different to America, um, and then do a visual gag between uh, uh, Canada and America, which is sort of playing around with the fourth wall really, and just trying experimenting and 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 being allowed to p play with formats and. <clears throat> you know, uh, lenses and, and, and film stock uh, and just to make it authentic, you know, as much as possible and just to try and get the, the truth as much as we can. So, yeah, I mean, I love putting the treatment on Canada. It was funny. I, you know, it could be, you couldn't always pull back from that stuff, but, but, but when, when this is such a bold, ambitious, unique, fresh show, it gives you the license to go that little bit further. And it, that probably appeals to all the characters and actors here that, that you, you feel you want to keep pushing it because, because it's all underpinned by this great story, um, both dramatic and comedic, but, you know, and, and we, we worked a lot on getting the story right. You know, you've got to get the story right before you, you drop the comedy on top, you know? So it's very much approached, you know, we're both from comedy. So, so that, that's, the, that's the bit which is comforting. It, it, you have to get the drama right first. So, um, yeah, I wanted to approach it as like a, uh, as if we were shooting a, um, if, if you took out all the humour of the Pentaveret, you just shot the very sort of serious story. That's how I wanted to approach it, knowing that you can, you, you can put those comedic touches in once you have the, the style uh, nailed down, underpinned, you know. So my, my training, <clears throat> well, I'm losing my voice, sorry, but my training <clears throat> was with a guy named Del Close, who was one of the founding members of Second City. And uh, what he wanted, he always said that you, you have to maintain an esprit de corps. You have to let people um, agree and add to what you've written. I hunted down Tim because I knew that we had the same sensibility and I knew he could make it better than written. Same with Ken, same with Richard, same with Debbie, same with Lydia. And what you try and do is allow people to you, you give them as much as what's on my mind. And then I want to know what's on their mind. Mm. Richard brought Higgins off the page. He gave it uh, a sadness that I hadn't imagined and a depth. And I really, that speech that about the ball bearings of, and, and uh, it's one thing to write that speech. It can be a little dry but he so brought such a belief in integrity to it more than I could have ever imagined. Lydia brought a sweetness to, to Riley. Debbie brought a uh, great comic ability, uh, an authenticity to a ballsy and brash New York. She just, when I met Debbie on Sorry I Made an Axe Murder, I back pocketed her for something <laughs> you know I mean? and I, I went, if I ever need such authenticity, but vulnerability at the same time, I know that there's a great comedy actress named Debbie Mazar that I can call upon. And thank God she said yes with Ken. He's a special effect. I mean, he's, you just wind him up, let him go. I haven't met that kind of natural comedy force since Farley. Chris Farley, to be honest, where you're just, I could light a cigarette off him, you know, warm my hands by him. And it's just a natural thing. So for me, it's just been a dream come true. Jennifer Saunders, she's the yeah. grand dame of British comedy. 
And to me, it's just been an orgy of yes, of people saying yes and bringing their A game. So it was, uh, it's one thing to, you know, to make the playground. It's another thing to have people come ready to play. And, uh, you know, I always find that actors make your stuff better than written, you know? And that's been the case with all of this. I, I gave as much as I could. And Richard said, yes, that's the other thing too. Richard, literally on the thinnest of whatever, said yes and made it fantastic. Yeah, and you've got, way you know, more than everybody because he had the least to go on. And then, yeah, but you, you know, you don't say no to you really, though, Mike. You know, because you're you're a sort of a legend, so you kind of know if somebody wants you to do something, it's going to have some substance <laughs> yeah. to it. You know, there's a bit of there's a bit of a mobster in me. I will come and get you. <laughs> don't forget, you know. Don't forget. Uh, but everybody said yes. Everybody came to play. And so much of this is Tim Kirkby. Thank you. And so much of the ending is when you work, this is what I love about England. I, I kind of feel like I got the best of America and the best of England. And, and as a Canadian of English parents, I'm heaven, mana, you know. I absolutely love love all of those details and I'm equally so glad that everybody said yes in watching the show. Thank you so much for sharing all about the Pentaver. Really appreciate all of your time today. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.